Let's hear directly now from doc Dr. Shulkin. He joins us. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here. Glad to be here, Brett. So let's start with this. Why do you think you were fired? Well, every cabinet member serves at the pleasure of the president, and it's the president's prerogative to have a team around him that he thinks is doing the job. I think we heard today from the president that he wasn't happy with the pace. And, you know, I agree with the president. This is a organization that needs to change. It needs to do better at his job. And we all want to do it faster and better because it's so important to the country. And I, I think the president has the right to have the secretary that he wants with him. You said the administration wants to privatize the VA. Have you ever seen, we, we haven't seen evidence of as far as White House policy directives sent to Congress saying that. Is there any direct communication with Congress that the administration wants to privatize the VA? No, Brett, uh, I actually haven't said that. I'm, I was part of the administration until yesterday. Uh, we are not trying to privatize the VA. We are trying to improve and transform the VA. What I said in my editorial is, is that there are a number of political appointees within VA that are pushing to privatize much faster than I think is in the interest of veterans and is the safe way to care for our veterans. And I've, I've stood up for them because I was in Washington and I was working for the president on behalf of our veterans. Why did you feel the need to write the op-ed? Well, listen, I think it's important. Uh, I came to Washington from the private sector for one reason, to fix the VA. I know this matters a lot to the president. And we as a country have a long way to go to get the VA in, in proper shape. But it would be a mistake to conclude that we do not need the VA and that we have to dismantle the VA. We have to improve the VA while at the same time working with the private sector in an integrated way to meet the needs of our veterans. You know, we heard the soundbite in Lucas's piece from Senator Moran um, questioning your dealings with that particular committee. Did, did you have a credibility issue with Congress? Oh, I don't think so. You have to remember I'm the only uh, cabinet member that had a 100 to 0 vote. Uh, I've prided myself in working in a bipartisan way. Senator Moran felt strongly about pushing uh, to give veterans additional options that, frankly, his own uh, senators, the committee, didn't agree with. He lost his amendment 14 to 1. He was the only one voting against it. And he was frustrated by that. And by the way, you know, he had some reasonable points there. So there are many things that he and I agreed upon. But in the end, uh, he didn't like the position that I took, which was to uh, do what I thought was the right thing for our veterans. About 11 months ago, I had you on special report. We were talking about the challenges. Take a listen. Have things changed? Are you seeing change? We're in the intensive care unit, and we're monitoring things really closely. But I am optimistic that we're beginning to finally deal with the issues that have plagued the VA system for decades. So the president said today that he just wasn't happy how fast or how, how things were going, that they were going too slowly. Uh, what's your response to that, and what can be get done to, to change that pace? Well, I don't think the president should be happy with where we were. And as secretary, I wasn't happy with where we were. We have to figure out how to move this bureaucracy faster and be more responsive. When you uh, showed the Verados, I know Michael and Sarah very well. And frankly, this was a system that failed them, and we shouldn't be doing that. So, so this is a system that needs to be pushed. Uh, many of the bureaucratic elements need to be restructured. I've started that process. I hope that Dr. Jackson will continue that process because it needs to be done. You know, you had the inspector general uh, obviously come out with this scathing report about um, about your trip to Europe. We've, we've been over that and your response to that. Were there other IG investigations or audits that that were factoring into this whole thing? Well, you know, Washington is a town that throws up all sorts of allegations. Uh, there were allegations of additional reports, but there have been no other reports that have come out. And I've addressed that everything that I did on this uh, European trip was pre-approved by ethics, was consistent with past policies at VA. But when the inspector general had concerns about it, I wrote a check and I paid back every penny of a single coach airfare. That was the total amount that, w that government funds were used for, and uh, I paid that back. So, look, I think I've addressed that. This was used in a political way to uh, try to remove me. And, um, you know, this is Washington. I'm a, big, uh, I'm a big boy. I understand that. 
Uh, I've said that it shouldn't be this hard to serve your country, and I don't think it should be, but thankfully uh, there are many people that are still trying to fix our systems like the VA. So if you had a message for the incoming secretary, should he get uh, confirmed, uh, what would it be? Oh, to, to you know, make sure that he's consistent with the president's agenda, to push really hard, always to keep the veterans' interests at heart, to make sure that he's working closely with Congress in a bipartisan way. VA cannot afford to be politicized. And make sure that he's listening to the veteran groups, because frankly, that's why we're doing this. That's what a responsive organization needs to be successful in doing, is listening to those that it serves. So uh, I will help Dr. Jackson in any way that he needs help, because it's very important that we succeed at this mission. Mr. Secretary, thank you for your service. Not an easy interview on this day. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Brett.